Hi everyone and welcome back to another English lesson by Learning English Pro. In this lesson we'll be taking a look at the ear and lots of related English vocabulary, so get ready for a really interesting lesson. And as usual, make sure to revise all the words covered in today's lesson in the word list in the description below. Let's jump straight into our lesson and this of course is the ear. It may be referred to as the outer ear and in medical English it can be called the oracle or the pinna. And when it comes to parts of the ear, there aren't really a lot known in common English except for the lobe. And for cartilage, this is the organic substance which the ear is mostly made from. If you're looking for more English words relating to the anatomy of the ear, make sure to stick around because I'll be covering those at the end of this lesson. But first up, we're going to take a look at some verbs and grammar that are related to the ear. And the most common verb associated with the ear is the irregular verb hear. It is irregular in the past tense, heard. As you can see, we add a D onto the end of the word in the past tense. And in the future tense, we simply use will hear. Let's take a look at some example sentences and first up we're going to look at the past simple tense. I heard the dog barking last night. I heard the dog barking last night. Let's move on and take a look at a sentence example in the present simple tense. I hear the traffic every morning. I hear the traffic every morning. Let's move on to the future simple tense. I will hear what she has to say tonight. I will hear what she has to say tonight. An important verb related to hearing is the verb to listen. This is a regular verb and the definition is to give one's attention to a sound. So we hear all the time, but to listen is to actively pay attention to a song or someone's voice or a podcast, perhaps. Let's take a look at some example sentences. In the past tense, we could say, I listened to the radio this morning. I listened to the radio this morning. In the simple present tense, we could say, I listen to the birds singing every day. I listen to the birds singing every day. In the simple future tense, we could say, I will listen to the podcast tonight. I will listen to the podcast tonight. We have another irregular verb, over here. This means to hear something or someone without meaning to and without the knowledge of the speaker. So this word over here in the past tense is overheard. This is where it is irregular. Like the verb to hear, this has a D on the end in the past tense. And in the future tense, we have will over here. Let's take a look at some example sentences. And in the simple past tense, we could say, I overheard my mother speaking on the phone earlier. I overheard my mother speaking on the phone earlier. Let's move on to our next tense, which is the simple present tense. I overhear my neighbors talking every day. I overhear my neighbors talking every day. Our next example is in the future tense, but with overhear, it's something that we can't really plan. So it's not really common to use this verb in the future tense, but here's an example anyway. I will overhear them talking if I go into that room. I will overhear them talking if I go into that room. Our next verb is a bit unusual, to eavesdrop. The definition of this is to secretly listen to a conversation. This is a regular verb, so it stays the same in all tenses. In the past simple tense, we could say, I eavesdropped on their conversation. I eavesdropped on their conversation. In the simple present tense, we could say, I eavesdrop on their phone calls all the time. I eavesdrop on their phone calls all the time. Moving on to the future simple tense, we could say, 
the agent will eavesdrop on the president's phone call later tonight. The agent will eavesdrop on the president's phone call later tonight. Let's move away from verbs and move on to an adjective. We have the adjective deaf. This word is defined as lacking the power of hearing or having impaired hearing. Someone who has problems with their hearing may be called slightly deaf. And we also have the term hard of hearing, which can describe someone who is totally deaf or partially deaf. People who have issues with their hearing will commonly wear a hearing aid. And of course, deaf people have their own language, sign language. There are many different types of sign language depending on what country you're in. American Sign Language is commonly abbreviated to ASL, American Sign Language. Throughout the ages, ears have been adorned with lots of different types of jewellery. The most common type of jewellery you'll find today is the earring. And if you're looking for more English vocabulary on jewellery in general, the link for this video is on screen now where you'll find tons of new English vocabulary relating to jewellery. Let's move on to a very different type of product relating to the ears. Headphones. There is also a smaller version called earphones. These can sometimes be referred to as in-ear headphones. And the latest innovation in headphones are earbuds. And a lot of these products work with the technology called Bluetooth. Now it's time to check out some vocabulary relating to the anatomy of the ears. There's tons of really interesting English here. First up, we have the helix. And indicated on screen is the fossa of helix. Below this, we have the antihelix. The depression in the ear beside this is known as the concha. Indicated on screen is the antitragus. Earlier, I referred to this part of the ear as the lobe. In medical terms, it is known as the lobule. Indicated on screen is the fossa of antihelix. Below this and beside the concha is the external auditory canal. We'll come back to this later. Beside the canal, we have the tragus. And below the tragus, we have incisura intertragecia. Moving on, let's take a look at the inside of the ear. We have already covered the term the external auditory canal. This is commonly known as the ear canal. Inside the ear, we have three bony ossicles, the malus, incus and stapes. Indicated on screen are the semicircular canals. These are three tiny fluid filled tubes in your inner ear that help you keep your balance. And beside these canals we have the vestibular nerve which is primarily responsible for maintaining body balance and eye movements. Beside this nerve is the cochlear nerve. This is responsible for transmitting the electrical impulses generated for hearing and localization of sound to the brain. These electrical impulses are transduced by the cochlea from sound waves. Next up, we have the eustachian tube. This connects your ear to your throat. The next part we will look at is the round window. This part of the ear helps decompress acoustic sounds into the cochlea. Below this, we have the tympanic cavity. And beside this cavity, we have the tympanic membrane, which is commonly known as the eardrum. The ear is divided into three separate zones. The outer ear, the middle ear, and the inner ear. For those looking for a more rounded vocabulary on the human body, you should check out my videos. I have the body parts, the respiratory system, human body systems, and a great video on biology covering lots of information regarding the cell. Links for these videos are on screen and in the description below. And that brings us to the end of this English lesson on the ear. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to check out the word list in the description below and let me know how you got on in the comments. I love to hear from you. If you're passionate about the English language like me, you'll love my channel Learning English Pro, which is jam packed full of vocabulary lessons on a huge range of topics. And if you can't find the topic you're looking for, let me know in the comments and I'll do my very best to make a video especially for you. 
Coming up on screen are some video suggestions along with the link to subscribe to my channel, so make sure to hit that to stay updated on all my latest English lessons. That just leaves me to say I hope you have a fantastic day and remember, keep learning English like a pro.